Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby at St. Stephen Baptist Church, Louisville, Kentucky, with another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments on a daily basis with the Master. Thank you for joining us as we continue our theme, The Faithfulness of God. Everything is dependent upon God sustaining it, making it happen. God is not only the creator, but God is the sustainer. God is the God who is faithful, which means simply this, that uh, God sustains what God creates. God does what God says, and God finishes whatever God starts. God is faithful. Great is thy faithful, the writer of Lamentations says to us. Great, O oh God, is your faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. Thy compassions fail not, God. Your mercies fail not. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. And we're looking at the faithfulness of God in particular areas of our life. And here's an important area where we can depend upon the faithfulness of God in the area of temptation. Temptation. Now, I, I, I like the temptations as a music group. I love them. Eddie and Paul and Melvin and uh, Dennis and uh, Otis. Papa was a Rolling Stone and Runaway Child, Running Wild and uh, uh, Psychedelic Shack. That's where it's at. Psychedelic Shack. I love the Temptations, those balladeers, but don't like nor court temptation when it comes to your life mission. Music, yes. Mission, no. You want to keep temptation out of your life because temptation derails your mission. And that is why Jesus taught us to pray, pray. One of the lines in the model prayer that Jesus taught us to pray is found in Matthew chapter six and verse 13. You know it by heart and lead us not into temptation. In other words, God, don't let us court Temptation. Now, what is temptation? And what does it mean when it says lead us not into temptation? What is temptation? Temptation is simply the allurement, the enticement to do something that is wrong and sinful. It is an attraction, an allurement um, to do something that is wrong. Now, check this out. When you talk about allurement, Allurement. The word lure is in the word allurement. And what is a lure? Well, it's a fishing device. And what does a lure do to a fish? A lure is something that is designed to attract the fish to something that the fish likes, but it's not everything it seems to be. So here's a fish swimming in the water, doing what, just minding the fish's own business. And then here comes a fisherman and he just doesn't put an empty hook on the line because no fish is just going to hook itself. So he lures the fish in by putting a lure or a bait on the hook to camouflage the hook uh, in order to lure the fish into a trap. So the fish is swimming, minding its own business, listening to the music of the temptation, not realizing that it's got a, it's it's in it's on a mission towards temptation. He looks at the hook, not knowing that under I looks at the bait, not knowing that underneath the bait is a hook, and he nibbles on the bait. He bites on the bait, and when he bites on the bait, he really is biting on the hook. And that's when the fisherman realizes that he's caught the fish and he begins to reel the fish in. Now, at first, when the fish is being reeled in because the fish is moving, the fish thinks that he's got the bait. But no, he doesn't have the bait. The bait has him. And guess what happens to that fish? That fish got hooked. He gets lifted out of the water, and after he gets hooked, baby, that fish gets cooked. But it all started when the fish was lured away from mission 
lured away from its purpose because of temptation. And the Bible says that you should ask God to lure you away. God help me to avoid a lot of these traps this that looks attractive, but underneath it is a hook that lures me away from the purposes of God. Now that fish did it unsuspecting, but what do you do when you, you know that you have a proclivity, a predisposition towards certain things and you court it anyhow? For example, if your temptation is alcohol, leading me not into temptation means I'm not going to the bar to go eat peanuts. Someone says, what are you doing in the bar when you know you got an alcohol problem? I'm just eating peanuts. Find a different place to eat peanuts because you should never go to those places or in those areas that you know uh, you have a weakness for. Now, this is what you need to know about temptation. Temptation always begins in the mind. It's what you think about. It's your imagination. Second Corinthians chapter 10 and verse five says this. We demolish arguments and every pretensions that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. So the thoughts in our minds and we say, boy, I shouldn't be thinking this. I shouldn't be fantasizing about this. I should not be imagining this. God, help me to take this thought and make it a prisoner. In other words, don't let it control me. Let me control the thought. Let me take it. What's it mean? That's what it means by saying take it captive. It means I am going to be in control of my thoughts. And that's very important. Maybe there's some people that you're angry with or you're bitter towards, and you maybe have a justifiable reason to be angry and bitter with them. But you, you've said to yourself, you know what? I, I don't like this, so I'm going to take that thought of bitterness and rage and anger, and instead of nursing it and rehearsing it and cursing it, I'm going to disperse it and give it to God and take it captive and just consciously say, I'm not going there in my mind. Sometimes it's just as simple as saying to yourself, devil, you're a liar. I'm not going there with my mind. And you'd be surprised. But sometimes instead of thinking your way into an action, you have to act your way into a thinking. You just have to act like I'm okay. I'm not going there. I'm not going to deal with this. You have to act it, act it, act it. And the thought will come when you just start acting it out. Now, when it comes to to temptation, I've got three things to share with you. First of all, I got some bad news, good news, and best news. So let me give them to you sequentially. First of all, bad news, good news, best news. Here's the bad news. The bad news is this, is that you will never outgrow temptation. Never. I don't care how much you read your Bible. I don't care how much you pray. I don't care how saved you are. I don't care how old you get you will never outgrow temptation. Uh, And go back to the fish analogy. There's different bait for different fish. Maybe one fish likes crickets, another fish likes worms, another fish likes dough ball. But the devil has a tackle box and he opens the tackle box. And when he sees you coming, the devil says, oh, I know what she likes. And they will bait the hook with it. And then the and then the devil will look at the next person and say, I know what he likes, and then pull it out of the tackle box because God's got the devil's got your name by some bait in the tackle box. And in most instances, whatever got your attention when you were younger, even when you get 60, 70, 80, it probably still will have your attention. Sometimes you just, it's not that you 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 have risen above temptation. It's just, it's just you getting kind of old. You know, the Bible says we are saved by grace through faith. Well, some of us are saved by grace through faith plus old age. So we just can't act on it. But even though we can't act on it, it still gets our attention. There's something that will get your attention. That's the bad news. Let's move to the good news. 
Here's the good news. The good news is temptation is not a sin. That's the good news. That just because someone gets your attention or something gets your attention does not mean that you have sinned. Ladies, if you're leaving church and you walk out into the parking lot and you just heard a great sermon and the choir just sung you silly, and you walk into the parking lot, it's a beautiful sunny day, and you look out in the parking lot and you see the most gorgeous, the most handsome man you have ever seen in your life. Somebody who kind of looks like a me. And you say to yourself, wow, that is one fine, handsome man. You have not sinned because temptation or to be attracted to something is not a sin. It's not a sin. I'll never forget one day that I was watching the Super Bowl. I, it was, and then halftime, it was a, a performance by Beyonce. And Beyonce came on halftime and she started dancing. And Beyonce, put it this way, when God saved me, God didn't blind me. God saved me and she got my attention. But just because she got my attention does not mean that I've sinned. All of us are attracted to something. That's not a sin to be attracted. That's to be human. Whenever you go down the street and you see McDonald's, you got an attraction to it. If some of you have an attraction to maybe what's in McDonald's, or whenever you go to the store and you see um, a Reese's Cups or Snickers bar, you, you don't act like you don't have an attraction to it. You got an attraction to it. I have an attraction to blizzards. There's nothing wrong with having an attraction. In fact, Jesus was tempted. We are told uh, in Hebrews chapter four and verse 15, it says uh, that uh, for we know we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weakness for we have one who has been tempted in every way, tempted in every way, just as we are, are yet he did not sin. Notice he makes a distinction between being tempted or being attracted and sinning. Go back to the handsome man, woman. Let's say it's a handsome man uh, out in the parking lot. You leave church. You say, oh, he's attraction. That's not a sin. The sin begins in your mind when you start saying to yourself, I wonder what it's like to be with him. I wonder if he's coming back to church next Sunday. I wonder if um, I wore a particular dress that uh, kind of reveals my particular cleavage and I'm in front of him, will he take the bait? I wonder, and then all of a sudden, I wonder if I can give him his, my, my, my phone number. I wonder if he'll come over to my apartment or my home. See, the temptation is not the sin. It's when you begin in your mind to start acting on it and action or thinking about it leads to the action. Just the attraction is not a sin. It's when we act on the attraction. You cannot stop being attracted. You will be attracted, but you don't have to act on it. That's why I've put on this screen for you. and You can write it down. Attraction is not a sin. Action is. It's not attraction. It's action. It's not attraction. It's action. It's not arousal. It's carousal. That's the sin. And that's the good news, because if you go around saying, my God, I should be attractive, I couldn't be attracted. Well, that means you're dead. That don't mean you're saved. That means you're dead. You're going to be attracted to a whole lot. And what one person is attracted to, another person may not be attracted to, but the devil has your name next to some bait and knows what you're attracted to. So the good, the bad news is that we're gonna be attracted to something all our life. We can potentially be tempted all our life. The good news is, hallelujah, attraction is not a sin, action is. And here's the best news. When we are tempted to act the action and we just feel compelled, this compulsion to act, God is faithful. We're talking about the faithfulness of God and God is faithful to help us with our temptations. We are told in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 11 through 13, these things happened to them as examples and were written down as warnings for us 
on who the culmination of the age has come. Look at verse 12. So if you think you're standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. In other words, don't think that you can't fall. That's what he's saying. It's He's saying here, take heed. That's what he's saying. Take heed. Verse 12. So if you think you're standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. Don't think that you're so super spiritual that you can't be tripped up. You can. I can. Take heed. Verse 13. He's going to say, but take hope. Take heed, but take hope. No temptation has overcome you. You haven't been attracted or lured uh, except what is common to mankind. In other words, everybody gets these temptations. Everyone. God is faithful. There is that word again, faithfulness of God. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. In other words, the temptation that comes upon you, God has said, will not be greater than your ability to resist it. So if you cannot resist it, either Either you're lying or God is lying. And the Bible says that God doesn't lie. God says you can. I will give you the power to resist the temptation. It will not be superior than your ability to resist. And then it says, but when you attempt it, he will also provide you a way out. So you can endure. In other words, not only will God help you endure it, but God will give you a way to get out of the temptation, which is goes back to what Jesus says, lead me not into temptation. In other words, help me stay away from those things that I know that tempts me that I'm weak for. Help me to know myself, to be honest with myself and stay away from the temptation. Don't forget it all begins in your mind. Whatever you resist will persist. In other words, if you say to yourself, well, the way I'm going to deal with my temptations, I'm just going to resist it, resist it, resist it, resist it. The best way to deal with temptations is not just resist, but refocus. Let me say that again. Don't resist, refocus. If something in your head, you just can't get out of your head. It's time and I just can't get it out of my head. That's because you don't have a life. That's because you need to refocus your life on something else. Don't resist, refocus. Why? Because whatever gets your attention gets you. You are not what you think, but you are what you think about. Whatever gets your attention gets you. And that's why Paul says in Philippians chapter four, verse eight, in conclusion, my friends, fill your mind with those things that are good, Fill your mind with that which deserves praise. Fill your mind with things that are true, noble, right, pure, lovely, and honorable. Because the bad news is we'll never outgrow temptation. And the good news is that attraction is not a sin. Action is. And the best news is that God is faithful to help us get through temptation. Yield not to temptation, for yielding is sin. Each victory will help you, some other to win. Fight manfully onward, dark passions subdue. Look ever to Jesus, and he will carry you through. I'm thinking about a particular woman who had a serious crack cocaine pro uh, a problem, but now she's a deacon in our church, and for years she struggled with the addiction of crack cocaine. And uh, she is celebrating sobriety for after 10 years, but she doesn't hang in the old corner she used to hang. And she doesn't hang on the streets she used to hang on. She's not resisting it. She has refocused her life and she's doing well. Well, what tempted her is not what tempts you, but you're tempted by something and so am I. It's time to refocus. It's time to trust God faithfulness to help us with our temptations. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for your faithfulness. Help us to internalize the, the truths of the message today. The bad news will always be tempted. 
the good news, temptation is not a sin. The best news, you're faithful to help us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for being with me. Another powerful point to ponder. Look, if you don't have a church home, I'd like to extend an invitation to you to become a part of St. Stephen Church. Contact us, New Start at ssclive.org. Tonight, Bible study, uh, we're going to look at the word of God together in Mark chapter 5. It's going to have a great study about the importance of not paying attention. Sometimes the most spiritual thing you can do is to not pay attention to what some folk are saying. So you join us tonight uh, for Bible study at SSC Live TV. Worship begins at 630 with our pre-worship experience and then uh, worship at seven o'clock with our worship team leading us in praise and worship. Come get your Bibles out, get your notepad out. Let's go to war with God's word. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for being with me today. I hope you have a blessed day until we gather again tonight. But until then, don't forget during COVID-19. Stay safe, stay sane, and if you can, stay home. I'll see you tonight in Bible study.